Hi everybody! This video introduces you to fabulism. So up until this point in class, we've been reading stories with familiar settings, characters, and plots. In other words, we've been reading stories within the tradition of realism. As a literary movement, realism was developed in the 19th century by writers like Jane Austen and Mark Twain. As suggested by its name, stories in this tradition seek to represent people, places, and events in ways that are true to real life. Uh, one example of realism is Stephen Crane's story, The Open Boat, which seeks to portray the, both the ocean and the four men in the boat in a way that feels authentic and real to the readers. So even stories that are fictional replicate experiences that feel realistic to readers. This week, however, we're going to shift gears away from realism to stories that could loosely be placed within another tradition, and that tradition is sometimes called fabulism. In their introduction to a collection of such stories, uh, both Robin Henley and Michael Martone describe fa fabulism as dealing with, quote, the fantastic, the unobservable, what may exist outside of the normal human ken, end quote. So according to this definition, the fabulous narratives include things like fairy tales, fantasy novels, science fiction, speculative fiction, and any non-realistic narrative. So any narrative that has some aspect of it that uh, doesn't seek to replicate sort of typical human experience. So I'm going to talk just a little bit about each of these stories. Uh, the two stories that are assigned for this week are Bloodchild by Octavia Butler and The Ones Who Walk Away from Amelis by Ursula, Ursula Le Guin. Uh, these are very different stories. Uh, they feel very different. Uh, however, they both fall within this tradition. Uh, the first story that I'll talk about is Bloodchild. Uh, this is a short story that's set in a fictional world that is very different from our real world. Uh, in fact, it's usually described as a work of science fiction. So uh, it exists in, you know, a sort of alternate <laughs> universe from our universe. Um, however, it does otherwise follow the conventions or rules of realist fiction. Uh, so uh, it has a fairly traditional plot structure. It ha follows a character who feels sort of psychologically real to us as readers and it has a sort of traditional narrative perspective. So it, it feels like a typical story, however it's not set in a typical realistic setting. The other story that we're reading for this week, The Ones Who Walk Away from Amelis, is also set in a fictional world. Uh, unlike Bloodchild, however, it does not conform to many of the conventions, or it doesn't follow many of the rules of realist fiction. So it doesn't necessarily have a typical plot with a uh, exposition and then rising action and a climax and following action uh, and then it didn't know it didn't know <laughs> it didn't know uh, it doesn't have one sort of central character that we follow it doesn't even really have a sort of typical um, narrator uh, in the way that we sort of expect a narrator to work. So it not only is sort of fabulous in its setting, uh, but it also breaks a lot of the other rules that we associate with realist fiction. So as you are reading the stories for this week, um, I want you to sort of think about these things. And this is what you're going to be exploring in your journals for this week, is how these stories either uh, sort of fall into this category of realism, the ways in which they meet our expectations, as far as sort of realistic stories and the ways in which they don't meet our expectations for realist stories. And uh, I will look forward to see what you have to say about that in the discussion.